everyone. Hello. <laughs> Episode number six. I don't know why I'm amazed every time I get to say another number, but yeah, here we are it's again. Yeah, fast. Yes. So uh, I know it's flying, because especially since each episode is two weeks in the difference. So it's a bit frightening how fast your life goes yeah, by. Yeah, that's twelve weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah three, three months. months. Yeah, wow. Getting older. Okay, so <laughs> I'm Kim. I'm Jennifer. I'm Jennifer, and we own Fleece and Harmony uh, Mill in Belfast, Prince Edward Island. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome to you. And if you're here with us with your tea or your knitting or just sitting back relaxing welcome back so today quickly what we're going to go through is we'll talk about our works in progress we're going to talk about our finished objects uh, two of them yeah yeah okay technically <laughs> sort of one. yeah yeah <laughs> not the ones you'd expect right but anyway we've got not. objects that are finished yeah um we actually have a new pattern as well that we're going to show you um we'll do an episode of welcome to our world so finally ken is off the hook <laughs> and we moved on to another section of the mill so he's that's done. interesting he's yeah. done yeah and we have a new yarn yes of course we do so. because as you recall a few weeks ago we said we were done introducing new yarns for the year right so now we have a new yarn. But this new, is the last one. With new colors. This is the last one for this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, right. All right. So, um, but before we get started with our official agenda, we do have um, a little thread on our Ravelry group um, that is Ask Us Anything. So we actually have two questions that we have to answer. Yeah, for experienced bloggers and bloggers, it's an AMA, um, Ask Me Anything. Okay, uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, uh, so the first one was coming from uh, after our episode with Mabel and Paige last uh, time was how do we come up with our animal names so i'm gonna let jennifer answer that because she usually is the one that names the animals yeah i'm gangbusters at animal naming yes you are <laughs> actually my explanation that i always give is that they tell me what they want to be called and then i just articulate it to other people oh <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> they just come to me yes <laughs> So <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yes, it's actually true that we don't name them right away. We kind of live with them for a little while. And what we found is that every animal, except the chickens, I guess, although we've named chickens too. We have, well, when it gets to be too many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most of the animals, um, like the sheep and the, the rabbits, obviously, and some other animals that we have, we, uh, they all start to have little personalities that you notice. So we don't usually name one right away right after it's born or if it's moved on to the farm we don't we wait and kind of see what they what kind of little personality uh quirks they have and then we name them um and somebody asked specifically about mabel um i don't know i actually i think mabel was because she kind of looked like maple syrup and we didn't want to call her maple <laughs> so we called her mabel mm -hmm. and my father has a really good friend named mabel that he, a kid a school yeah. a school Chum. Yeah. So that kind of was in my mind as a possibility as a name. Or but after Mabel Bell. Yeah. That's another Mabel. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of Mabels. For us, Mabel is a good down home, East yeah. Coast farm, steady kind of name. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of people named uh, Mabel in Cape Breton, which is where yeah. my father is because from. Because Mabel so. Bell is, or Mabel was, did she go by Bell? Uh, I don't know. Are you sure you're not thinking Ma Bell? <laughs> Alexander Graham Bell's wife. Um, anyway, the uh, there is Mabel is quite a common a common name. So uh, in Cape Breton, where my father grew up, so it's yes. kind of in our in our heads, I guess. Yeah. So that's the first one. So uh, the answer to that is it just it, we just name them as the names come to us. Yeah, and if you try to force it, it won't stick. No, that's right. We there are animals that we name because we tried to herd to think of something and just came up with something like some of the gray bunnies. One was named Renard, one was named Bernard, and then whatever. We couldn't remember which one was which, so now they're named something that makes sense yeah. with their personality. So that's what we do. Yeah, because yeah. then you'll automatically be reminded. Yeah. 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 We that's have right. a lot of animals to keep track of. So <laughs> yeah. It's a right. lot to remember. Right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the second question was, uh, do we prepare fiber for hand spinners? So not a lot really we do do it sometimes if we have um, a certain fleece that we want to we think that would be good for hand spinning we'll uh, we may prepare it but we don't actually we don't have a lot of hand spinners coming to the to the um, store or the mill looking for fiber 
Um, we do do roving though, though. So we have roving uh, on hand most of the time. Mostly it's sold for felters. Um, but we, uh, since our sheep are kind of um, crossed mixed breeds and not necessarily, um, you know, the traditional hand spinning wool breeds. Short so, staple length. Yeah, a little bit yeah. of short staple length. So it's not, we don't have a big demand for it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And the longer the better is not better for our mill equipment. So right. actually we only really want two and a half to three inches. So. Right. That's right. usually not the luxurious locks that a lot of discerning hand spinners yeah. would be looking for. The only fleece that we don't spin into yarn is actually James Bond, who is one of our rams. He's a border luster. Um, and we do keep his, uh, because he's got really nice curly locks, so we do keep that his fleece se separate. Um, and we sell that when people come in. But actually a lot of rug hookers as well look for those locks to add into their, um, their hooking, when they're hooking um, for... Uh, artistically hooking for wall hangings and things like that um, but I'm afraid that we won't have any of his fleece when we shear in March because he looks like he's a re real pig pen this year hmm. yeah it looks pretty dirty and matted so I'm not sure what's gonna <laughs> what's gonna happen there if there's any that we can save or not but. yeah usually fall fleeces are better anyway because they've been outside more yeah. and yeah. Uh, they tend to stay nicer when they're kind yeah. of rubbing around against each other in a pen yeah um, and we've had them in the pens a little bit this year because the weather has been so terrible yeah. which we're gonna say right up front we haven't knit nearly as much this couple no. of weeks as we normally do because because it's been minus 35, everything's frozen, everybody needs water, yeah. it's been a skating rink, yeah. and uh, very high winds, and just right. been terrible. So we've been pretty exhausted trying to keep the farm running under those conditions. It's, and yeah. there's been challenging. Yeah, like dust bowl type red outs, because our <laughs> soil is red, and all kinds of weird things happening. There's not a speck of snow on the ground. No. It's just a wide open wind tunnel. <laughs> yeah, very island. cold. And we live yeah. in a 150 plus yeah, um, farmhouse, which is pretty drafty at the best of times. But with that wind coming through and it, it, the wind comes from different directions and the way that the wind's been coming the last couple of days, it's actually uh, blowing towards our side of the uh, our side of the house first. So Ken and I. And it's actually been keeping us up at yeah, night. Yeah, I've been listening to it all night too. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's a bit. Uh, last night was okay. Right. Yeah, we got a little bit of sleep, and we burn wood in our furnace, so uh, we're also uh, have one ear open for if the if the fan is going on the furnace or not, because the temperature can drop pretty quickly in a drafty farmhouse. So. Yeah, and people are getting up in the middle of the night to fill the furnace yeah. box, not us. Yeah. Well, I did one night. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't in a very good mood the next day, so I try not yeah. to do it. I try not to do it. Yeah. So it's been kind of a rough couple of weeks farm, farm wise. Anyway, yeah. moving okay. on. We'll move on. So um, the next thing is our works in progress. Yeah. Which we have many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weak on the FO side of things, but um, yeah. do you want me to go to first? Then? Sure. Yeah. I like. <laughs> so I go. I'll go. I don't know what in what order. Okay, so the, I'm still working on my sock, but all I got done was the heel flap, and I turned the heel. Great, excellent job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was really fun, and I love this little heel design. So this is still the Kate Atherley pattern, um, both sides now and then. And I really should get these finished because actually my one pair of intact wool socks, because my dogs love to chew socks that I have. I think uh, are probably due to be laundered. I've been wearing them a lot <laughs> because it's been so cold. So I really need to finish this. But yeah, it's a, you know, fun part. And now I'll do the gusset and then we'll continue on with that. Yeah. So that's all I got done in the last two weeks. But you know, it's progress. Yeah, you can say you got something. I did something. Okay, because then of course we started our mitten along. Knitting, mitten, snitten, smittens, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> smitten, mittens. Um, and I'm very smitten for these mittens, uh, but I did say I was going to go slow with this one just so that I could remain sort of active in the group, probably a little extra slow, but I uh, have my first one done and it's a lovely pattern. I yeah, love how my so color cute. work turned out. Uh, if I were to do it again, I probably would have gone up a needle size for the color mm -hmm. work band. It did get a little bit tight on me. I'm using the needles that were recommended. I'm discovering as I do more combined color work projects that usually going up a bit just makes it, you know, just a little bit Which more Which was, was recommended in the pattern, right? In mine? I don't know. No. I oh, didn't okay. see. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> so back to my point about reading through patterns. Yeah. <laughs> 
actually don't know. Oh, Dang okay. it. You know what? I might rip it back. Why? Well, why not? Oh, okay. Does it look a little tight? Let me know what you guys think. I, I can rip it back. It's well, not that much. Well, your wrist is smaller. It's not that it doesn't fit. Anyway, it's got a very cute little pearl and knit pattern on the back, and I just think they're going to be sweet. So this is clearly the right one. Yeah. And uh, it's not that my floats get tight or anything. I just think... Uh, yeah. I don't know. Would you rip it? No. Hmm. Definitely wouldn't. Could be a design feature. It's like the waist. Yeah. Okay. In fact, I think I'm mixed up. It's not that pattern that recommended it to go up. It was your... Uh, the sweater. Your definitely sweater. did. And yeah. I definitely did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I... Whoa! <laughs> okay. That's <Wow. laughs> All right. It's kind of like... Okay. Our yarn is very bouncy. <laughs> As you can see, just a little bit tight. Sort of behaving a bit like an elastic band. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> so will I just show mine at the same now too? Sure. I'm show your mitten. And yeah. Then I'll go to my sweater. Because okay. I'm doing Tron time, <laughs> and um, I'm I'm loving this actually, but again, I think mine is just a little tiny bit tight. But my hands are fairly well; they're not very big, so it fits because I can try it on as well. But it's a it's a little bit snug. Um, but I'm not, I don't think I'm, uh, oh, it looks perfect. Yeah. It's, uh, and when, usually when you, uh, block our yarn, it does kind of relax a little bit. So I think it's actually going to be perfect. I did go down a needle size. I had, um, some trouble getting gauge. I did a swatch. Um, the one thing though, is that I, the pattern recommends doing a swatch in the round with color work and you've heard us say this before on the sock and that kind of thing. If you're going to do that, you may as well just start the knit, the mitten and Hope see what happens. Yeah. Hope for the best. So luckily I'm able to try it on and it, it seems like it's, uh, I think it's it looks good. great. Yeah. And people are asking the yarn that got sent out with these, uh, is actually flock fingering yes. is the yarn blend that I used in the kits. And some of the colors are existing colors and some of them aren't. So on the Tron time one, these blues, I actually just created for the kit. So they don't really have a color, color name, but I guess we could call it Tron Time Light Blue and Tron Time Blue. Yeah. Uh, and then this is Autumn Birch and Rhubarb, two very popular colors of ours that were existed already. So yeah. people are wondering, it's flock fingering if for your Ravelry. For the week. Yeah. yeah. And um, there's a couple things, your mitten had the same thing. The Latvian braid, first time that I've done that. Most fun thing ever. Yeah, I'm loving it. Fun, fun, fun. fun. I actually really want to do a pattern and maybe incorporate it into some trim or something. It's really neat. Yeah, it's really, yeah. although you need to be careful with your tension. you got to be on the ball. Oh, yeah. I took <laughs> mine out and redid it um, one or two times. Oh. So I just noticed that I just dropped the stitch here. So I'm, I'm going to fix that. Neat, so mine seemed to turn out okay the first yeah, time. Yeah, so but... I had to redo it. And I do, it's a little bit tricky when you join it. Yeah, it's hard to get that tidy. Yeah, so if anybody has any uh, hints oh, You don't have tips for us? Fit? No, I don't have tips, <laughs> but um, it is a little bit, it is just a little bit tricky. So what I love is that you have a pattern on the palm and then a different pattern on the on the back. I just, I just well, I like everything about the pattern. And even though I've knit quite a few pairs of mittens, I've always done an afterthought thumb. So I've never actually done a thumb gusset like this and, and uh, this thing. So I'm learning a couple things with this. Uh, with this yeah. I should say. I know. It's so cool. So we have a knit night here on Monday nights now from 6.30 to 8.30. And our friend and our local MLA, which yeah. is our member of the Legislative Assembly of Prince Edward Island. Yeah. I got that right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is uh, She made stitch markers for everybody and everyone got a little... Valentine's gift. Yeah, and mine says uh, love, and then I have a heart on the other. So she made, yeah, yeah a progress uh, keeper and stitch markers for yes. for everybody so that was at our that little That was knit so night. sweet. Yeah. yeah. Come yeah. to Knit Night, get a set of beautiful handmade stitch markers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, it was, everybody was so surprised. We'll have hundreds of great. people next Monday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, but no stitch markers. Although oh, yeah. We, do, we, we always guarantee. do have good cookies. We have stuff. biscotti. Yeah, yeah. The Scotty people. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay, so that's it for that. Yeah, and of course, everyone is welcome to join our knit night. So if you're watching this on the island, we'd love to see you. And right. you don't have to be knitting with our yarn, which is such, such a shame. Yeah. Because one of our good neighbors and friends wrote and said, well, I'm crocheting in acrylic. Yeah. I don't think I can come. <laughs> yeah. And of course you can. It's a of shame. course you yeah. can. Yeah, it's about the activity, not the yarn you're using. Right. And we sit around and we yeah. even had a guy. Yeah. Last night. yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Yeah, we had yeah. fun. 
And speaking of guys, we had a lovely student from the area who yeah. did a 4-H presentation on the history of men in knitting. So if you didn't right. see it on our Instagram stories, he had a whole storyboard. Yeah. And he went through, it was a lot to do with wartime because, of course, yeah. knitting was very, very Everybody important. Everybody was knitting. Yeah. yeah everyone everyone like. needed socks. Yeah. And uh, we actually learned a few things. So he yeah. did the whole presentation again. And he yeah. tells us he passed, but not quite with flying colors. We weren't sure what that meant. Because exactly. it seemed excellent. Yeah, it was excellent. Yeah. And, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think he passed with flying Color. Yeah, he's very modest. Yeah. And he's actually been here to our beginning knitting class yeah. before, and so now he's knitting through his school. Right. And it was tremendous. Yeah. And our I favorite think he's thing, 10, right? Yeah. He our, was nine when he started when he yeah, first he met him. So I think now. he's 10. Yeah. yeah. So our favorite thing was the poster from World War II where it was teaching people how to knit and, and get in the guild and knit well. Yeah. And it said, think Pearl Harbor and Pearl Harder. Yeah. We loved it. <laughs> Just it's for like your attention, and it's really good advice. I'm yeah. going to do that. Pearl harder. And then you won't have to worry quite so much about... Loose socks. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your in the round tension would be more similar to your flat tension, yeah. because in the flat, you would be purling harder. Oh, do you think that's what it meant? Well, I, I think it's it meant, good for your tension. I thought it was like, oh yeah, it's good advice for your tension. I just thought it meant, they meant knit faster. Oh shoot. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I took it as very good advice. It's be, Yes. They were, they were, it's good advice on many levels. Well, to comment and let us know if you think, well, isn't yeah. it the pearl that's usually loose or is it the other way around? Well, I don't know. I think it just depends. Okay. We'll look into it. Get yeah. Back to you. I, so, I took it to mean pearl, literally <laughs> pearl harder if you want to get into the guild. <laughs> Otherwise your tension sucks. Yeah. That's what I took it to mean. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Interpretation is everything. Wow. Okay. Maybe the poster wasn't very well done. It wasn't clear. <laughs> We don't know what to do now. There should be a disclaimer. Yeah. Asterisk, this is what we mean. But while we're talking about tension and pearl and knitting in the round and color work and everything, I'm actually wearing a sweater that I made for myself, which I, it's, it's going to sound funny that I'm saying this because it's, I don't really feel very comfortable in it. So uh, I'm wearing, and it's all about the color work over the yoke. First of all, I went a little bit crazy with the Samoyed yarn. So. <laughs> it's just a slightly, it's got a, quite a bloom. Yeah, it's overwhelming. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> it's, all, it's also, this is one of those things, this was before, uh, I admit this, this a few years ago, is um, that you, I did do a swatch for the main part, but I didn't do a swatch for the color work, and this color work is just a little too tight. I just find it's just a little bit restrictive and it's Samoyed and I think it uh, maps up pretty easy yeah when yeah. I blocked it I I might have been a little felt bit too aggressive little. I know better now okay yeah it's still impressive yeah it, well something you do lose Some. definition in the pattern with all yes. that halo so I actually love love the sweater it's a free pattern on Ravelry actually mm. it's silver stag by drops so I'm almost I never do this but I'm almost tempted to re-knit this pattern in our, our yarn because we weren't making yarn when I when I did this so in our own yarn and then I have a little bit of the Samoyed yarn left and I would just do where there's snowflakes in the Samoyed and just do the um, the stags themselves flat in a flat white hmm. uh, natural yarn I would do it all flat but I, it, yeah, I think you should do that because it's like an unrequited love for you now I know I really totally really unsatisfying like yeah kind of what we were talking about projects that get left and can yeah. you turn them into something or should yeah I, I feel yeah just rip that sucker yeah <laughs> <laughs> I also cut it even better I also um, Think I measured really carefully when I was trying to knit because I have lots of sweaters like most knitters have that don't really fit. They're either like mostly too big. I used, used to knit very loosely and kind of inconsistently. And so I have lots of sweaters that are kind of sloppy and not very, not very flattering to wear. And this one I really was careful about measuring the length and doing, you know, all of that. But I forgot a very important factor and that's girth. Oh, because it was the perfect length on paper, but when you actually put it on, yeah, it takes it up. Yeah, it yeah. takes it up. So if I was to redo it, I'd, I would do it a little bit longer. There's so as much well. to learn, you know. Yeah. Like we're doing a my first sweater class, uh, and 
it's just not going to be perfect. But like, you're just not, I mean, yeah. the, I think the students are learning a lot and they certainly have good help. Yeah. But some of these things you kind of have to experience almost yeah. like there's a lot to, there's a lot to learn, but that's yeah. not that you shouldn't try. We're yeah. trying to get people into knitting sweaters. So. Yeah. And I think that it's kind of give, it's given as we become more experienced, it's actually giving us a new um, perspective on what it means to rip out and redo something. If you look at it as a learning experience and that you've learned something, Plus, you get to know your old style of knitting. Yeah. You, and your own body. Yeah. Or your yeah. body, where your body needs extra or yeah. less or whatever. Yeah. And also, um, we knit mostly with our own yarn now. So we're also getting to know all the details of our yeah. own yarn and how it behaves and reacts. And all our yarns are a little bit different. So Yeah. And you can't go into a store and try on 20 different ones and pick one. So yeah. every designer writes slightly differently, like sizes yeah. slightly differently yeah. or grades differently. And yeah. you sort of... Yeah, there's really a lot of factors. You almost have to get a feel for through experience. Right. Before and the good news the about part. wool and yarns is that you can rip out and just yeah. reuse it. So it's not a it's not a done deal that you just have to keep driving through when you know. And you're better to do that when as soon as you start feeling yeah, it's not minute, it's not yeah. right because yeah. uh, otherwise you'll have something that you're not going to love as much as you would love yeah. if you did. And the it. act of doing it is the joy. I yeah. Mean, it, in right. part, right? So yeah. there's no need to rush it. You're still knitting. So yeah. don't so be we'll resentful. look forward to seeing this as just a bunch of balls of yarn next No, no, time. I'm not going to rip it out, I don't think. I think oh. I'm going to do it You're with You're just going to redo it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. just going to redo it. Um, because I'm a little bit worried that some of this is a little bit felt. It'd probably be sticky. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be very sticky. Um, this was actually a super wash, so that will come out okay because it wouldn't felt, but I think the Samoids felt it a little bit, so I'm not going to rip it out. I would, I never knit the same pattern twice, but I would in this case. Yeah, you like, have to give it to someone, find someone yeah. who likes it. Yeah. All right, good. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> so that's kind of a long... Uh, I still oh, haven't done my last whip. Okay. Right. Okay. So the one thing that I did manage to find time, quite a bit of time to work on, is my Ramia sweater. And I actually thought in my mind not knowing what the weather was going to be like, that I would have my second sleeve on by now. And I probably would have, but the truth is I probably lost about a week mm -hmm. in total. And uh, it's just, you know, I <laughs> really work on it when I'm exhausted and I was doing a really good job and then I kind of got lace fatigue where you kind of know the pattern a little too well and then your mind drifts and you realize you don't know it as well as you thought. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of like when you've over-rehearsed a speech yeah. and you're trying to use the cards, but then you realize you've gone past the next 10 cards and yeah. then you look, oh my gosh, I had that happen. You did yeah, not recite it once. Oh. <sighs> anyway. Is that the one where you... talk about more childhood pain? Yeah, I yeah. got up in the middle and left. Yeah. My poor mother. <laughs> <laughs> I was a handful. Yeah. I just refused to start over. I, I really got lost and then I just couldn't recover. It was at City Hall. Yeah. Oh dear. I was Full never house. gonna make it to Carnegie Hall. No, <laughs> as far as you go with City Hall, Back, that was my last recital. <laughs> yeah. and, okay. and you stopped playing the piano. I kept playing the piano for a good number of years, oh, but okay. my mother definitely wasn't keen for me to enter any more recitals after that. Yeah, it is embarrassing for the parents when the <laughs> kid behaves that badly, and my poor teacher too. Yeah. Gosh. Anyways. Okay. So <laughs> moving on. Sorry, mom. Moving on. <laughs> sorry, Mrs. Foxall. Um, <laughs> wonderful piano teacher. Oh God. Uh, so I'm all the way over to where I'm going to start um, the raglan bit again, and uh, then the next thing is to do the left sleeve. Is it, I see your um, stitch markers are all I know. Color coded. They're in a rainbow. They, oh, okay. Just a rainbow. They don't mean anything when you no. switch from yellow to. No, I'm just okay. that. You know, ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, well, I wanted them to all be green, and then oh. I ran out of green because oh, they're yeah. all in my couch or whatever. Okay. And I was like, "What am I going to do? I can't, I can't just have some random mashup of what? No." <laughs> so I did this. It's all in the details. But this is important. So this is like a key marker in the oh, pattern. Okay. So the red, the start of the red signal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The things I waste my time on. Yeah. Anyway, it makes me happy. What can I tell you? you might have That's had another four rows done if you weren't worried about that. It was. It was. A, yeah. It was a period of time to get it all organized <laughs> and figure out. And uh, <laughs> coconut stitch marker is very my favorite, and we do sell these yeah. at our store too. So if you yeah. also feel like your stitch markers need to be in a rainbow, and I use a lot of markers when I'm doing lace because I I can't lace knit a whole row and ever expect to end up in the right place. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I'll be starting the. Um, and I think it's just, I'm really excited with the fit of this. I think this looks yeah. perfect because you can see from the sweater yes. I'm wearing here, maybe the ragman will start. And then I'm going to do the left sleeve. 
and which is knit as an orphan and i actually don't know how it's attached i could have read that ahead but i didn't and i don't care so uh i'm almost to the end of the lace chart and then it's the sleeve and then the stockinette on the back and i'm still loving it right it's a joy i did have to rip back a couple times this week too though see i would have had more done but yeah. for some reason the my knitting mojo is just not not up to par yeah are you back now though I think I am. I'm going to yes. be spending a great deal of time in the knitting nook. Yes. I told Stephen that I was going, as soon as we were done recording, I was going in there and not coming out till midnight. Yeah. Oh, really? Till yeah. midnight? I know. Oh, you're going to stay up late. And yeah. <laughs> really. I, uh, so, and Jennifer um, Beal actually has a, has another pattern, too, uh, which is on Ravelry, which is fantastic i think yeah you really need to check out her page she's yeah got some great patterns yeah she's really and i already have my next one planned that i'm gonna do that's not been released yet and i just hope i'm sort of available <laughs> when it comes out to start it right away but i've already got another one she needs to stop now it's enough yeah. jennifer we can't take it anymore we can't keep up <laughs> they're like just, I'm they're just one awesome. from the summer or early yeah. fall yeah, yeah. They're just awesome. so they're all yeah. beautiful so yeah. definitely check out um jennifer beale's ravelry store if yeah. you haven't had a look in there and you like color work and she's just yeah. really cool designs yeah. anyway i did want to mention one other question we got actually which is i when i talked about my perhaps love hat uh, okay. launch last week and or two weeks ago thank you to everyone who bought yeah the kits. I'm so looking forward to seeing some projects going up on Ravelry with my perhaps love hat yeah um, anyway the stitch dictionary that I used to find um, the cable hearts was this one by Wendy Bernard I have all of Wendy's books and I love them yeah they're my absolute they're favorite amazing. if you want to dabble in design I would highly recommend them they're beautiful they're beautifully done and she does, it's literally top down and in the round. So you don't have to convert stitch patterns depending on the direction you're knitting them. She's done it all for you and there's charted and written instructions. Beautiful photography. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just love them. So yeah. these are definitely my go-to other than a couple other specialty dictionaries which I, which I have. Um, yeah, so if you want to check out this book, I highly recommend all of her books, actually. And she's got three stitch dictionaries that yeah. I know of so far. Yeah. And if she ever releases another one, I'm going to be on the waiting list, just like I was for that one. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, really great. Well, okay. nice. So it was such a pleasure when things are nice and clear. Oh, yeah. yeah, They're very well done. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now that's it for the works in progress. Yes. There are some that haven't made it on the show because they're still in progress and we've had yeah. that in progress for quite a while. No progress doesn't we make it into work in progress. That's right. Okay. So <laughs> if, if there's no progress, <laughs> if it's been sidelined for some reason, yeah. then uh, we'll bring it back when there's yeah. something to talk about. Yeah. We didn't talk about your new phone. Oh my gosh, I got a new camera. Yes, thank goodness. There's nothing here. No. Or there better not be. No spot. Yeah, and a very astute viewer pointed out to us that it actually looked like perhaps it wasn't just a crack. In the lens but a crack with some sheet poop in it yeah which he felt made it very authentic yes and hilarious and <laughs> i i was like wait a second wait what and then i was like oh my god i think he's right yeah because the crack <laughs> went all the way through the lens but there was, and it was a brown. spot on it yeah you had to admit the yeah spot was brown it was great I had virtual sheep poop on my face yeah. for the whole episode last Which time. Which is not that unlike the real sheep poop that we probably normally have on. Right. <laughs> that's right. I think that's where that's the authenticity part. <laughs> yes. Right. Anyway, hopefully this camera does not hit the concrete floor in the mill and right. break because I've still not finished paying for the last iPhone and now I've gone and bought another one. Right. But, you know, phones just don't last around here. Like, no. I, I carry it in my pocket. Anyway, let's no, not go into it. You always have your phone. I do, and we, and when, when I don't bring it out, that's when we will need to call the vet. Or somebody does something really cute. Yeah, right. So, I, you know, it's a farm <laughs> phone. An right? animal, yeah. Yeah, we, I need to have it with me at all times. So yeah. I could actually use two, like one beater and one yeah. <laughs> for doing this. <laughs> anyway, right. enough about that. So now we're on to our FOs. Right. Finished objects. We have two matching ones. Yes. And it's also a pattern release. Right. So this is a pattern that I did last June. And all summer, I told people, I'm going to write it up any 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 day now. Because we had one it's, sample in the store. Yeah, we had the sample in the store. Never do that. If you have the samples in the store and you have a pattern for every single one, right. but one, that's the one that everybody will want to make. That's right. And that was my life last summer. Hopefully, they still like it. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I finally wrote it it's up. It's a great project. Yeah. So, it's called the Evening Walk Shawl. And this was my first prototype. And all I really wanted to do... 
like the genesis of this was that I wanted to see what size of a needle I needed to use with our air and weight yarn to create a really a nice drape. And so I just did a triangle shawl and uh, eight millimeter is what I came up with. And I think it's perfect. Yeah. The fabric is very loose and lovely because yes. you see all kinds of fingering shawl patterns. Of course, they have lovely drape. But for a quick knit in an air and weight yarn, you know, what could we get sort of a similar feeling out of without it being so hot that you couldn't possibly wear it anywhere? Right. And so that's what I did this. And then I just kind of was like, oh, I'm going to make my spine two stitches wide just to be contrary. And, uh, and then I really wanted to add a ruffle. And so I did this double ruffle. And then we have this fun little sort of, uh, it's by Katia. It's like a little pom-pom merino yarn. And uh, I thought these were so cute. So I dressed it up with some pom-poms and a ruffle. Yes. And it's just three skeins of yarn plus the pom-pom novelty yarn. yarn. And we're putting kits for it online. So the right. Evening Walk Shawl kits are now online. And there are three potential color combinations that we're going to display. But you could, of course, do whatever you want if you want to order it outside the kit. So this is our variegated color work, uh, or colorway, sorry, stones with crow wing, which is our black, and then the black and gray Katia pom-pom right. mattis. I want to mention that it's, uh, it is a novelty yarn with the pom-poms, but the yarn itself is really it's nice. It's beautiful. It's 100% merino. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's a good quality, uh, it's a good quality yarn. Yeah. And of course they're faux fur. Yes. Faux fur. fur. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I wouldn't necessarily put them in the wash. I did, I did wet block it because the ruffle needed to be stretched out a little bit. Right. You have to bind this off quite loosely so that your ruffle doesn't curl up. Um, but generally speaking, you won't be washing them a lot. So we don't worry about the uh, synthetic fibers getting into the water and right. stuff. So yeah, it's more of a special occasion. So kind of I thing. actually wore this one evening in, yeah. this, in the summer. So even in the summer here, most evenings become fairly, are fairly cool. So and we're usually out on the water if we're eating out. Yeah, exactly. Because why wouldn't you be? Right. So we were uh, out to dinner. The four of us went out to dinner um, at the Inn of Bay Fortune. And they had all the windows open. They have a lovely space uh, there. They're just across from the water. And they have just a huge... It would be like a sun porch, I guess, mm -hmm. in an old house, but it has windows all over it. And you want to have the windows open when you're there because it's just lovely, the little breeze coming off the ocean. However, it does get a little chilly. When you go there for dinner, you eat for hours. So the sun goes down. <laughs> and then I put this around, and you really hit the nail on the head, Jen, with this because it's the exact perfect weight to give you a little bit of uh, coziness and, and warmth, but not heavy and not too hot. Yeah, and so. it's nice and stretchy, so you can get a lot yeah, of Yeah, and it's very generous. It. It's a yeah. good, generous uh, sauce. Yeah, and quick, quick, quick. Yeah. I mean, the ruffle, you know, there's a few stitches in here. Yeah. Because you double and then double again. I'm yeah. not going to tell you how many because you won't order it. It's totally yeah. worth it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this was my sample that I knit as I was designing it. Right. And then the pom-pom yarn comes in three colors. And so we had our lovely friend Jennifer Hicks test the pattern and do it in crow wing with just the black with the white pom-poms, and I do love this one. I think yeah. I actually like this one better. No, well, I'm not sure, I like both of them. Yeah, it's just a little bit more simpler, so a little yeah. bit more elegant, and I think the white pom-poms are awesome. So this mm. will be a kit as well, and then the one other option is a black with black pom-poms, which right. would be a very subtle effect, but still right. fun. Or you could use the black uh, pom-poms with the, the stones Yeah, well, you can mix then, and match whatever. Yeah. I mean, I'll just put up some suggestions, but if you want to order a different combination, just message us. We're yeah. happy to put together whatever you want. So it's yeah. basically, this one is three skeins of crow wing um, and just the one in Aaron. of pom-pom in Erin. Yeah. 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 Nice. So that'll be up and it's finally done. And it's pretty fast, right? It's very yeah. fast. Well, yeah. it's three skeins, you know, three yeah. skeins of 150 yards on plus a little bit of this on eight millimeter. Yeah. So yeah, I thought it went fast. Right. I think Jennifer wanted to kill me somewhere <laughs> near the end of this ruffle, but it's totally worth it. It's just straight knitting. <laughs> no Still not going to tell you how many stitches it is. It's yeah. totally worth it. <laughs> Trust we'll me. take your word for it. You can wear it anywhere. Right. All right, so that's a pattern release. So the yeah. evening walk shawl, ready right. to go. And a kit. And it's in kits. Yes, and I guess you're pretty glad to check that box. Yeah, I felt terrible. Yeah. Like, people were like, can you email me when it's done? There was like a whole list. It was awful. Yeah. You can never put a sample in the store if you're not ready to tell no. them how to make it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Sorry, people, but I hope you're watching this, or it'll certainly go out on our email this week, yeah. our email newsletter, which if you don't... 
you're not signed up for our email newsletter, do that. Yeah. Too. We do have one. It's right at the bottom of our website. There's a little white box that just says subscribe. Yeah. Um, Because we do send out special things in our blog posts and things like that through that. So that's another way to interact with us if you want. Besides the thumbs ups, which we love. Yes. We love the thumbs ups. They're really working for us. So thank you. And we're still answering comments. Uh, So much fun. It is really fun to answer uh, all of your comments that you're sending in. Yeah. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. It's part of our, uh, and in the Ravelry group as well. Yeah. There's, we're all the stuff. engagement is just such a joy. Yeah. yeah. And I so that's it. So now we're going to just take a quick break to do uh, our segment for Welcome to Our World. And this week's episode is about carding. So now yeah. we're getting to the meat of yeah. uh, things. Ken is off the hook because yes. he's his area has been covered. Yeah. So now you're on the hook. Yeah, and I do the carding, and it's a very, very, very critical step in preparation. Yes. So if it's not carded properly, it won't spin properly, and right. then it's a mess. Right. And, uh, yeah, so we've learned a lot. There's really a feel for these kinds of things when you're spinning yarn. Mm-hmm. It's not that the carder does it for you. You actually really have to know what you're doing. Yeah. We adjust speeds, um, the weight, the amount that we put through at a time. We double check the cleanliness. There's, uh-huh. and I'm not just saying that because it's my job that it's so important. <laughs> there actually is a lot to it. I've screwed it up enough well, times, and I, the stuff comes back yeah. from the spinner. Uh-huh. That I know that, uh, yeah, it's really important. I think, uh, I think you, by the end of this series that we do, you'll understand that actually every step is because you send stuff back to Ken. Yeah. No, we're really fussy because <laughs> yeah. you just you don't get good yarn out at the end. So what's the point? It's kind of yeah. like not ripping out your sweater when you feel you need to. Yeah. That's right. It's exactly like that. Yeah. And, and we never want to waste time. So the no. better job you do at each step, the better the end result is. Yeah. Yeah. But I think a lot of people think a mill just spins yarn and actually the people make the yarn. Right. The mill just makes them faster. Right. That's right. So yeah. without further ado. Yes. You're on. Go look at me <laughs> doing something else now with a voiceover of me talking again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. We'll see you back in a minute. Okay, so we're finally carding the fiber and I actually did find an assistant to help me show how we do this. This is Janet and she's arranging the fiber on the belt of the carder. Each of the blue lines indicates one section of the belt and we'll put the exact same weight of fiber on each section so that we get a really nice even roving out on the other side. It's important that the fiber is spread out very evenly on the belt so that it comes out as a nice even roving which will be easy to spin. So Janet will spend quite a bit of time checking the speed that the machine is running at and smoothing out the fiber on the belt so that it's going through as evenly as possible. And then she'll go over and get the next batch, which in this case we're doing 60 gram batches. So every uh, section between the blue lines will have 60 grams of fiber on it. This is actually some lovely alpaca belonging to one of our custom spinning clients that we're working on today. This is just a close-up of some of the drums of the carter going around. You can see it's quite a system of pulleys and drums, and the fiber really goes through a lot of different drums before it comes out the other side. And this is all designed to just create a really smooth roving for spinning. And finally, we have a completed roving coming out the end of the carter. It's not quite ready for spinning yet. It still has to go through something called the draw frame, which we'll be showing you next week or next episode. All right, so welcome back. Thanks, Jen, for that. (laughs) Stupendous. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Get her to wait for my turn. Yeah. All right, so last episode we talked about the fact that we had combed and combed and combed all those bunnies and we have a new year yeah and we're so happy with it yes but we find we find ourselves hilarious oh right so. there's a name for it sort of <laughs> are we taking a vote or are you just gonna no oh, i'm gonna dictate. no voting this okay. is not a democracy <laughs> okay because i thought of this name i thought was hilarious okay so we as you know we we name things after things that we see around us lots of we have um place names incorporated in our names and everything so we the next community over from us from belfast is iona so uh, and this yarn has 15 percent angora rabbit 
wool in it, and we're calling it I Own a Bunny. <laughs> I own a bunny. Yeah, yeah, and it. it's a yeah, and it's a special edition thing. So right. we don't know when we'll be able to make it again because we put like we used a lot of fiber, like everything yeah. we had, yeah. because we wanted to make it sort of fairly bunny-ish. Yes, um, but you can't have too much bunny. Yes, that's so fifteen percent right. uh, seemed to be magic. So. Right. Uh, so, so it's 15% Angora rabbit, which we've hand combed ourselves yes. from our nine little, uh, every hair, our nine we've, little babies. We've taken out with our own bare hands. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, it's 85% of our, uh, wool, lamb's wool. Yeah. yeah. And so the colors, so I first picked a pattern. So I went to Ravelry and I was looking for projects that I thought would go perfectly with the yarn that I was sort of envisioning. And the one we decided on is the Hannah Jumper by Irene Lynn. And I did contact Irene and she was so sweet and supportive about us using her pattern. And it's mm -hmm. a lovely pattern, um, which of course you're seeing now. And so then I wanted to pick colors that I thought would look nice uh, with it. It's got beautiful bell sleeves and you yeah. can see, uh, I think she's used a mohair. So there's quite a bit of bloom. So I thought the bunny would slide right in mm -hmm. there perfectly. So she shows it in a light pearl gray on her pattern. And so this is a very light pearl gray, which right. is basically white wool mixed with blue steel bunny was the majority right. of the fiber we had because right. most of our bunnies are gray. So that one's undyed. That's this is complete, undyed. This is just completely, yep. Just a very pale gray, the yeah. palest gray I've ever seen. Yeah. And then we did lullaby which mm -hmm. is a very pale pink this mm -hmm. is a color we've never used before it might be kind of a new color <laughs> again another new color the last one right <laughs> this might be a new color <laughs> this might be a new color violet that's really nice i like that. we've never used this yeah this is a new color it's beautiful violet <laughs> <laughs> last two new colors for the year no more new colors <laughs> And right? this is an existing color called dune grass. Yes. You guys, this yarn turned out amazing. Mm -hmm. And I feel weird saying that because I know we made it, but we're always surprised ourselves. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll get over that, but it's just exactly what I wanted to do mm -hmm. this sweater. Um, and uh, we're really thrilled with it. So I did swatch it. And we've skeined it in uh, 250. 250 so because it makes it easy for uh, projects. Yeah. So you don't have to have order way more than... Yeah, normally like I, this weight we would skein in 380, but... Yeah, so yeah. I think it, uh, the the pattern, if you buy it and you look, your size probably about 1,000, which would be four, but that will leave you a little bit of extra. That's right. my thinking. That, right. that was our thinking. Yeah. And it's in limited supply. Yeah. So if you've been waiting this from this for this for the last two weeks, hit pause and go. Like if you really <laughs> want a sweater quantity, I yeah. would go right away. Yeah. Because we cannot make any more. No. Like the bunnies only give when the bunnies give. Like right. there's nothing we can do. <laughs> We've got uh, just a few sweater quantities of each color. Mm -hmm. So I did get sort of like a batch and a half, which is a fair amount, but not a ton. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that that'll be it. Like we can't shave the just go out and shave. The Especially at minus 25. No, yeah. And so I did swatch. I started my... It just feels so amazing. It's soft and I just love this fabric and it is kind of a spring looking pattern so it'll be great. Right. And it's bloomy but not that bloomy. No. So you don't need to worry about... big. It's not like it's this. It's not up it's your nose, stuck to your eyeballs, bunny, bunny right. stuff. Except for when you're spinning it. Right. Well, I mean, we've all had it on our eyeballs, let's face it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it was lovely to work with. I just swatched this last night. I have soaked it. It came out a little bit big. I was surprised. Yeah. I thought I would need to go up a needle size, but this was with the five millimeter and I got 18 stitches and the gauge should be 19. So I'm going to redo it at a four and a half. For the Hannah pattern. For the Hannah pullover yeah. pattern that we're, we're suggesting to go along with this yeah. yarn. Well, I really designed the yarn to go with the pattern. I mean, that's the truth yeah. of it. I picked something that I thought would look great with some bloom that was springy that people would enjoy making a lighter weight yeah, yeah. and so um, so this is the dune grass and yeah I'm actually excited I get to go down a needle size because I thought five was seeming a little bit big for the yarn oh, and okay. four and a half would be great but I also knit loose so you guys might get it right off the bat yeah uh, you might get 19 stitches with the five millimeter that's recommended in the pattern mm -hmm. so I'm Definitely gonna have this Maybe cast I'll do on. Maybe I'll swatch as well. Yeah, because you're a bit tighter. Yeah, I'm a bit tighter. 
But I mean, it's very close. So you'll yeah. definitely be able to get gauge and then you just have to decide what size you're making. Right. And uh, it's a beautiful long bell sleeve, but I think you could easily convert it into a short sleeve sweater if you wanted to. Yeah. And uh, I think the colors will go perfect. It's kind of a pattern that you can adapt, I think, with different weights of yarns. And yeah, some focusing. people have knitted in a really fine yarn. Some yeah. people have knitted in a thicker yarn. Another one that would work really well that I was considering doing was Ranunculus by Midori Hero. Mm -hmm. So that's one that's been knit in a really wide yeah. range of weights. And it's a very low yarder, so I think you would only need three balls um, to make that one. But uh, I don't know. I just fell in love with Irene's. But both of those would work. Yeah. Yeah. So Great. so try either one. I think those both of those patterns are really good examples of you don't you're not tied to what's suggested necessarily. Yeah, it's like just, just a different it. fabric. Yeah, it's just a different yeah. fabric. Like some uh, Irene's pattern, it's quite opaque. But some people have done it. It's it's just like a shell. They've done yes. it in a really fine silk mohair or something to wear like a tank underneath. Yeah, or... and you would wear a tank underneath. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, so very and, versatile. Yeah, and the pattern really holds up because it's cute. It's got a little bit of lace and a few baubles, and it'll be yeah. really fun. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to finish uh, Ramya, and then I'm going to start this one. But I'm kind of hoping to have it cast on by next time we record. Okay, you're gonna spend I'm, a lot of time in the knitting nook. I'm behind. Yeah. Yeah. You'll catch up though. You're fast. I think I will. I don't. Yeah. I just. I feel terrible about how little I got done this oh, two weeks. But you know, beat yourself. Up. And then my shoulder was kind of sore. Like when you're lugging a lot of water and buckets, and like literally every morning now requires a pickaxe, a crowbar, and a hatchet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like crazy. it's hard on your shoulders, and then when that gets tight, it it goes into your tennis elbow or whatever ever kind of little knitting repetitive strain things you might have brewing underneath the surface. Because it just all tightens up, right. and then I was kind of having a little bit of that. I actually had to use a pickaxe this morning to get a gate closed, and I, I was having a little bit of a pain at the back of my shoulder, and I just discovered this morning what that's from. The pickaxe. The pickaxe. Yes. Yeah, like you'd be, I, mean, I don't know how to explain this, ice, like horses are tap dancing, and it's so stressful, like you yeah. can't... You can't dive in and be like, whoa, here, you yeah. know, they will crush you. Yeah. <laughs> so you just have to let them you know, try to find their footing. Yeah. And so we're sanding and salting everywhere. And then it's like, they can't moving them around. So they and don't have to walk on ice. And yeah. And the ice is moving like a glacier. So one yeah. day the water bucket's fine over here. The next day it's over yeah. here. And, uh, it's just a lot of extra work. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't we're had a lot of snow. We're complaining again. We complained oh, sorry. for five minutes. And <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> terrible. Well, this is winter. On it's, kind of, it's kind of been uh, our focus. That's why it's like really top of mind. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what it's like to be a farmer. And it actually hasn't been a bad, like a bad no, winter. No, because not a lot of snow. Not a lot of snow. And uh, it's just the, the, uh, the ice and the... The fluctuating temperatures are really the worst. I mean, it was six one day last week. Yeah. It poured rain. Uh huh. And then it froze to minus thirty five. Right. Like you just aren't prepared to deal with that yeah. kind of thing. It, there's just there's no way to deal with it. It's yeah. just you have to it's the way go. It so anyway, we're we're aces with the pickaxe at this point. Yeah. So that's good. Another life skill. <laughs> Check that box. <laughs> right. Fortunately, we have a pickaxe. Yes. You probably wouldn't realize that that is standard for equipment, but <laughs> right. there you go. That's it, right. When you have groups of <laughs> things that the gates have to close tight. Yeah, because those sheep. little sheep will squeeze through. Yeah, we don't want yeah. the boys mixing with the girls. Yeah, so. they'll do that. They're very determined. Yes. I yeah. noticed um, Stephen put up a sign. Yeah, no entry. Fence. Yeah, no entry. Not realizing, of course, that the sheep can't read English. Right. Yes, it's between, <laughs> it's between where the where the boys are and where the girls are. Yeah, so. it's quite funny. Yeah, it is hilarious. We, he didn't tell anybody that he was doing no, it. No, so just we discovered. Just we like, just uh, discovered. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is this a biosecurity thing? Yeah. Uh, I think it's for the lambs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been warned. Yeah. <laughs> if you could read. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Although they did get together one day. I don't think that was because they didn't see the sign. No. It was because somebody was, was distracted and left the fence open. The gate open. Yeah, yeah. that was me. Yeah. The gates <laughs> being left open is never a good thing. No. Anyway, so the rest of the day was spent sorting sheep. Yeah. Sheet. yeah. Luckily, so we'll just resort them all then. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Chasing little lambs around like, no, you belong over here. Yeah. Uh -huh. We did get them all. All so intermingled. All, yeah. It's all's well that ends well. Yeah, it was fine. Right. All right. So anything else? No, I think that's it.
Yeah. There's nothing All right. else. So Good. That's, well, we're... That's the update. You've had your weather report. <laughs> 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 farm report. The farm report. Yeah. And uh, we really hope you love this new yarn and the new pattern. And we really look forward to hearing from everybody about it. Yeah. And thank you again. What are you doing on Shopify about the... On the shop about the yarn? Just putting it up. Isn't there like a page for subscribers? Oh, yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so important. So, yeah. So we do have... Gosh, good thing you reminded me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have a limited quantity of this yarn. So what we're going to do is actually link directly to the page to purchase it in the show notes. Right. So that only our podcast viewers can find it first. Right. Because we know you guys have been waiting for it. Some of you have already mentioned that you're waiting for it to come out. And we don't want to run out... Um, we're hoping that everybody who wants it gets a chance to try some. So yeah. down in the show notes, right. there will be a link directly to the page to purchase this, that purchase it, that will be unnavigatable from the main, main menu. No right. one will be able to find it. They won't even know it's there. Right. Except yes. for you guys. Yeah. So hopefully that works out and we'll leave it like that for two weeks. And yeah. if it doesn't all get sold, then we'll put it up public. And on your way down to the show notes, you can hit like. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> she's smart. <laughs> Up Give up. us a thumbs up on your way down. And subscribe. And subscribe to our email newsletter. <laughs> or the podcast. Or the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, and I, but I won't even link to the yarn in the newsletter. No. I'm going to be that exclusive right. about right. it. Right. So Just for be, watchers. Yeah, for now, for the next two weeks, there'll be no way to buy it but except to link through um, the show notes. And we hope right. that gives everybody a fair chance to get a hold of some that really have, right. been, have heard about it, you know, a couple weeks ago now. Yeah. And met the bunnies. And we think that's only fair. Right. So I'm not going to promote it at all no. until two weeks from now. That's right. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Excellent. Okay. okay. Well, thanks, you guys. So and we'll talk to you all soon. Have a great two weeks. Yeah. And before you know it, we'll be back with finished socks and finished mittens and finished sweaters. Maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.